thing to stay with us. If you recall, last weekend, our president had said something about education back at the Global International Education Summit that went viral. And people raised issues concerning the fact that the president does know the issues we have in education. And during the week on Monday, uh, the ladies of you discussed it, and we talked about the fact that we know the problems in education. So therefore, what are the solutions? Well, join us today is the Honorable Commissioner for Education in Lagos State, for Lashade Adefisaya. Welcome to the show, madam. Thank you for having me here. Good to have you. So on Monday, spe specifically, the ladies um, discussed the fact that we've identified infrastructure, curriculum, um, issues with teacher apathy, learning not taking place in school. We see the issues. We don't want to talk about the issues. We want to know exactly what you and your government are doing concerning, let's start, I'll start with cu curriculum, for example, because there's a perception out there that the Nigerian curriculum is outdated, is, um, um, is, is, should be overhauled, and that it's not um, relevant for this, for this 21st century. Could you give us an idea of what's going on? Is that true, first of all, and what's being done to the curriculum? Well, to some extent, it is true. I, I as a practitioner, have always believed that um, the curriculum, we can really address the curriculum. We can modernize it and make it fit for purpose. What I find is we are turning out children who I think are not fit for the world they are going to live in. And therefore, we should integrate that curriculum with a lot more skills and less content. It's very content-driven. There's a lot of stuff in it, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it makes you wonder, like... Um, I, I can digress and talk about when I studied the Nigerian curriculum, two sub, a, a single subject, and I studied the British equivalent. And I found that the Nigerian curriculum for biology, for example, assumes you want to be a doctor mm. or a pharmacist or a PhD in biology. Mm. The equivalent, the British one, assumes that as a human being, you need to know about the natural world. Mm. And so, therefore, it is not as deep in its content but its assessment methods are more interesting and therefore you learn better mm. because it focuses more on skills. Mm. Like when you draw the eye and you say label, mm. what does that, I mean, mm -hmm. what is that? Mm -hmm. But this one would say, these are three eyes, what's wrong with them? If you uh -huh. cannot label, you can you never, can't well, you can't right. answer that question. Mm. Yeah. So it, it, it requires you to use skills that you've acquired and not just the content, mm -hmm. you know, just cram. regurgitating, cram and pour, cram and pour. So I think it, it, it's a lot of things. There's a lot of content, and the way we assess that learning has taken place is inadequate, and there's less focus on integrating with skills. That's a reality. But since we are solutions-driven, right? You want yes. me to go to yes. solutions? Yes, please. Since we are looking at solutions, I think two important and interesting things are happening. The NERDC, I can't speak for them, that's the national body that is in charge of our curriculum. They've been going around the country now. They want to update the curriculum. And what I find most interesting is they're talking to stakeholders. When they came to Lagos, we actually had students in the classroom, probably in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, at the session. And you had these children from public schools in the neighborhood. And one of them said something quite profound. He said, others are talking about coding, app development, mm. we are talking about typewriters. Oh. So I think they are listening. Yes. And so we're hoping the next iteration will be a modernized curriculum. But for us in Lagos State, what we've done is this curriculum is our curriculum. I'm a Nigerian. I believe we should teach our children mm. about Nigeria. Yeah. I don't want children to not, not to have a sense of their Nigerianness. So it's important to me that, yes, we do... Uh, implement the Nigerian curriculum, but I always have thought that we need to implement it as it should be. Yeah. So and there's so, a part of curriculum that yeah. I, I, I've always wondered. So okay. when we were in school, our curriculum were not um, include. You didn't have any form of emotional intelligence involved in any of our curriculum. The way they addressed oh. peer pressure, cultism, and all of those things then in school was simply tell us bad, wrong, and you know, um, remember you. your parents, remember your family name, and those things. It worked for us. It's no longer relevant today. It doesn't work anymore. People don't remember who, mm -mm. you know, people just do things. Is there a possibility of finding a way to put this in our curriculum such that children own themselves, you know, and you can deal with any of these vices that are attractive, mm. so-called, in society? Oh, that's, that's a beautiful question, and thank you for asking. You don't need to include every topic. Yes, you can talk to them about what in mm -hmm. emotional intelligence is, but it's the practice of it that matters, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. And not the knowledge, just yeah. mere, I know, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. So I think as an educator, I think 
the best way to do these things is to integrate into practice, is to make it um, experiential. Yes. The way mm -hmm. a school conducts a lot of its activities, the way you conduct simple things like assembly. Like I find we preach too much at young children. Yes. And they, they won't listen to somebody like me. Mm -hmm. So if you want to preach, maybe the young chap who was dancing, singing before me yeah. would be a more interesting person <laughs> for them. But what, 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 what you do is you manage all the activities in the school such that children are learning every step. You can learn from every situation. Mm -hmm. You can learn from what is written on the walls. You can learn from the culture of the school, what the school refuses to accept, what it has zero tolerance for, what the school celebrates, how they treat, how seniors treat juniors, how teachers teach students. Right. Oh, these are all the things that I think you do to teach a right. lot of these uh, right. And so but when yeah. you said that you were not learning, you mm -hmm. were because your teachers too were role modeling. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. they were. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay, so ma I will take us to infrastructural improvement. I didn't want to go to infrastructure yet. Let me stay for one okay. minute. I'll, just, okay. I'll, I'll come mm -hmm. to you to infrastructure. The issue of curriculum, one of my fears is the fact that some certain states want to go at a certain pace. So other parts of the country may not be at that same pace. So how do you customize your curriculum to meet the needs of your own children in your own region or state. Do you, I'm trying to say it in a, in a very nice way because there are some states that are focused on maybe IT and some states are not. I don't want to make it a state thing, but how do we customize the curriculum to fit to be fit for purpose for your own children in Lagos mm. State? Great. Well, that's why I was saying that what we've looked at is said uh, we've said that this curriculum is like a bare minimum and we need to work on it. So we've developed our own schemes of work and integrated every topic across the various skills that we want our students to have. That means we would integrate it with things like teamwork and collaboration, critical thinking and problem solving, innovation, digital literacy, personal leadership, motivation, empathy, and so on. But like I said, it's experiential, but it's also the way teachers teach that will make students learn exactly. these concepts. So we've done a lot of that. And, uh, and that's because you can do that. There's, every state can take that curriculum and take it to the next level because uh -huh. it's kind of like they are giving you a like, framework. Yeah. It's not the your, casting stone. No, no, it's not casting stone. Yeah. No. Okay, I want to go to infrastructural um, improvement, but since um, Moriah's <laughs> question, my question would be, would it work if one state had a curriculum just for its state, just for the children from its state, especially as children eventually write the same exams, common entrances, WIAC, NECO? What would it's be not, best? Curriculum is very different from skill. What, what you do, the curriculum is kind of like the overall direction. Okay. And then you, you adapt your schemes of work. So you teach what is in that uh, mm -hmm. curriculum. But in adapting your schemes of work, and that's what we've done. We've looked at how we teach, how they learn, how we assess that teaching has taken place, the skills that we deliberately and intentionally build in the classroom. And so that's, what, so it's not that we are very different. Because like you said, they have to go for that exam. Yes. Mm -hmm. You cannot, uh, biology is biology for exactly. example. Exactly. Yeah. Is the way you teach biology. Uh, English, maybe, is the way you teach it, really, that we are more concerned with now. Because if you look at Nigeria's curriculum, honestly, and look at curricula of other countries, there is not much difference. Mm -hmm. it, it's maybe too much content, like I said, mm -hmm. to, and the way we assess. It's the way we assess that I personally feel is the greatest problem. So, so. Mm. Okay. When you start saying, the exams. what mm. is the color of this cup? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Draw, draw an okay. insect. Let me just draw go back to my original question. So, uh, we had the president talk about why um, we have issues in Nigeria. He talked about infrastructure. He talked about um, no like proper schools. He admitted, yes, we don't have proper infrastructure. The schools are run down mostly. And I know that Lagos State, based on the Echo Excel, we hear the governor talk about it. We have a few people who have come here to talk about you know, how schools have been improved, the facilities have been improved. So I'm wondering, what are the things that Lagos State put in place so that maybe other states are watching? Where did, first, where did they learn to do what they have done to improve the facilities? What are those things that they have put in place? And what can other states learn from what Lagos State is doing? Let, let me and address probably your help That was a long question. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. Also, <laughs> next also, also probably help our president to say these are the things we are doing right. Where did, you, where did we learn it? I guess it's from experience and, 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 being, and, and, being, and, and people in the ministry and uh, those of us running education in the country and, of course, our governor, Governor Baba Jite Sonwulu, all of us wanting something better for every child in the state. So I guess we learned it. We, it it's, it's not learning. It's like it's a desire. And so um, starting from that desire now, 
what we've tried to do and what we've done is that every year put aside a sum for education for infrastructure. Let's look, what do we want our schools to look like? And then we have started investing. Uh, sometimes I'm a bit downcast, I won't, I won't lie to you. Because it looks like the more you do, <laughs> the, the less the it looks it like you're doing anything, the more it looks like you have to do a lot more. But I think that, that was number one. Mm -hmm. Address the schools. What should they look like? What should a typical classroom be like? What, should, what, 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 what resources do you want to put in a classroom? How do you want the children to learn? So it, it's a lot of brainstorming, thinking, um, consulting. Getting the council of, oh, uh, no, you, you can't do anything Good without news. that. Mm -hmm. First of all, there must be political will and then top level. Mm. Thanks for staying with us. We still have the Honorable Commissioner for Education, uh, Mrs. Falasha Diadefusayo. We're talking about infrastructure for the break, and I want you to be more specific. I don't want us to use any big grammar. I want us to be, what, are we building schools? Are we painting them? Are we building classrooms? Are we putting in furniture? What exactly is infrastructural review? What are you doing exactly in the schools? All of what you said. So we are trying, for, for years, uh, we haven't built new schools in Lagos State, especially at secondary level. So we are building new schools. Okay. We are supplying infrastructure, uh, tables and chairs into, every class, into, as, into all our schools. Okay. We are building fences because many of the schools, especially at primary level, did not have fences. But then that was because in those days, you didn't need a fence in a village school. I mean, right. it's part of the community. You don't fence it off. But things are happening now that require that uh, we build fences. We are building security apparatus in some of our schools. We are building things like um, watchtowers and so on in the boarding schools that we have. We are, we are supplying uh, resources for use in the classroom. And I'm excited about a new school concept that we have. We, we are building a green school. It's, it's still a pilot, so it's oh. in only one school. Okay. So it's, it's made of... Um, containers. Of course, we stripped off all the yeah. excess things that will make it hot. And uh, we put, um, a, what do you call it, on top? So solar. That, uh, solar. So it's solar powered. Mm -hmm. no, no nepa for the buildings at all. And then, um, so there are classrooms, there are labs in that building. And we want to see what it looks like. Eco-sustainability. Eco-sustainability. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's low maintenance, so that's going Very forward. low maintenance. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about your teacher recruitment and training. There was something mm -hmm. that was popular then. It was like a motivation for, mm -hmm. for teachers to do well. So we mm -hmm. had the awards. We had all of those things that, you know, encourage teachers and, um, you know, uh, recognize the work that ex um, excellent teachers did. Mm -hmm. How is it now under this administration, under the present governor, and, you know, um, do, you, do you also do the debates that, you know, where the, the, what we call the BRF debates then? Do you still do it? Because I don't see that anymore highlighted in, on television like it used to be. That's a question with many facets. <laughs> so I'll start with the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a fair bit with the recruitment. Uh, let me thank the governor. Because we, we have recruited in a, in, a, in a while, but we've recruited a new set of teachers. I'm very proud of them. Young, mm. tech savvy, sharp, mm. you know, excited, well educated. I have a you, friend. Know. you have a friend too. Mm. Aha. And uh, they're going through all sorts of uh, orientation programs that will get them deep into teaching. Mm? Because uh, I, for any teacher, it takes like three, four years to settle down into their, uh, you know, into their, into a smooth, uh, can I call it routine. And okay. after that, they kind of peak around like 10. But you want to keep them at that peak. And so what do you do to sustain interest? I think for the young ones, training and orientation and so on. For the older ones, we are giving them opportunities with things like... Um, uh, competitions, teacher of the year competitions, mm -hmm. and so on, and I think I think it's doing it's doing it's, it's doing mm -hmm. quite a bit because the, Mr. Governor gave out cars recently, yeah. and mm -hmm. everybody was excited. They didn't believe we would do it, mm -hmm. so when we said apply, many didn't. But I think this year we're. we're, we're <laughs> there's a perception that our teachers mm -hmm. are outdated, and there's a perception that these teachers are not qualified. There's a perception that teach, Lagos State or that um, that no government schools don't have qualified teachers. Is that no true? No, in, there is no teacher in the Lagos State public school system that is not qualified. The minimum qualification we have at primary school level is NCE, mm -hmm. but at secondary school level, it's it's a degree. It's, it's a degree. If, if they don't have a beard, we would take a PGD. 
So for the new recruitment of maybe 3,000 teachers, all of them had degrees. So we don't, we don't play. The few teachers who might not have are teachers who are teaching very technical subjects like uh, IR, uh, IRK, where you are, uh, they, ha they have to be scholars. Mm, yeah. So their own qualification is the qualification for people who are going to teach that particular mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. So we don't play with that. Okay, so would you say in Lagos State you have no teacher apathy? Because that's one of the things our president also highlighted. Many people would rather go into um, other um, sectors of the economy, mm -hmm. banking, contracts, but we don't have enough teachers. Would you say in Lagos State you don't have that problem? Of course we do. I don't, uh, I think over the years, teaching has lost its luster mm -hmm. as a profession of choice yes. for a young person. And that's, of course, for many reasons. But it's not uh, in Lagos State because of salary. Because if you're an engineer, if you're a lawyer, if you're a teacher, you come in and level eight. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. not as if you are going to get less than mm -hmm. a fellow professional. But mm -hmm. I guess the, the movement to the top is slower. Mm -hmm. So there might be some level of frustration and so on. But I think that is being addressed now because to make teachers love their jobs is not difficult. Uh, teachers generally, generally love the children, love their jobs. But when apathy sets in, they won't do well. So I think what we're trying to do now is also to rekindle that passion, rekindle that love for the profession, and make the profession one of choice. I will tell you now that when we are recruiting, last time we had 100,000 people applying wow. to be teachers. Throughout the lockdown, the government paid teachers. The government continued to look after them like normal. And I think there is a sense now that it's a stable, good career. Mm. And, and it's not that it's, it, it hasn't pushed banking off, no. but it is pushing it off because there are no jobs in banking. How many people yeah. are in the banking Nobody. hall? Mm. With all those targets. I mean, there's, 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 there's nobody in the banking hall there's anymore. A, presently, there's the. Tesco, um, that's the secondary school recruitment Tesco, going yeah, on now. Yeah. What exactly would make a person look towards um, applying? If you, uh, aside the stable work, is it something that you, is that a, that's incentive. extra incentive to, to want to join? Well, to join Tesco, we want uh, people who, of course, are qualified. Mm -hmm. but qualifications are not everything. We don't need experience. We'll train them. Oh, what good. we need is attitude. Madam, yeah, it's not 25 years experience. No, 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 no. We, 25 years experience, we won't take such a person, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because the, we are taking in entry level. Entry level. Mm. So it's level eight, level nine. So we are not going to take people who, uh, that's not fair to them anyway. They, they should be principals or head teachers. <laughs> you don't let, require me take, that in the let me take Bissala. Bissala, are you there? It's been holding for a while. Good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I want to contribute to the program. I want to say thank you to the minister, uh, to the Commissioner of Education. Yes. She is really doing well. My friend got employment through Lagos State, and I follow her. They go for training. Yes. And the only problem I have is that um, this website to log in and apply for a job is um, trouble. Mm. So the government should do something concerning the website and it should be easy. Okay. Mm. Like, it would be very easy for you to log in because I also tried, but it didn't work out. Like, right. I wake up in the morning, middle of the night, to try to get a job in Lagos State. It's not working. I also hear other people. So, you have, it's, right. it's a very okay. it's a tiny line for you to get Thank through. Thank you, Bissala. Um, That's feedback. But so, they are really trying to continue the employment because I have three of my friends that got employed. Fantastic. Really so, it seems the process is seamless. They didn't have connection, right, Bissala? Mm. They, they were just regular Nigerians. Nigerians. They shouldn't hear me. So I guess the, that's feedback on the website. We need yeah. to make it more. There's heavy congestion. I told you in two yeah. weeks we had 100,000 people. Mm. Wow. So, it so was, that could be. It, yeah. It's heavy congestion. But that means that we too need to do it. We're still talking education today. And we know that the government have introduced technology at some point. Because we, when Osho State introduced Okoyimo, you know, there was that worry that ah, children... Uh, and, tablets. and tablets. Mm. But Lagos taken with a different angle of giving the teachers instead of the students. What, is the, what have you seen as a the difference, difference, number one, and what's the role of technology in the educational sector today? Well, let me say we gave the teachers in primary schools, but we gave students in secondary. Okay. 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 So the teachers, uh, the tablets in secondary school, to so in primary school, to support them with the teaching in the classroom, the schemes of work downloaded, uh, suggestions and so forth, activities and all. So this was supposed to, the intention was to help them, you know, look, let me tell you the thing about teaching now, what we want to achieve, is that every child should have a minimum level. We don't want, children, 
if you are taught by a bad teacher, the impact on you can be tremendous all yes. lifelong. Oh, yeah, nice. So what we are trying to do is, whether you're a bad teacher or a good teacher, let, let, let's have a minimum level beneath which no teacher can go. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that tablet is there, helping every teacher, giving them ideas and, and so on in the classroom. And that's in our primary schools. In our secondary schools, we actually give the students something like a point more. But in this particular instance, we negotiated because we didn't want the children using it to go online and doing all sorts mm -hmm. of things. Uh -huh. So uh, what they did was that um, the MTN, oh, sorry, okay. one it's of okay. the <laughs> telcos gave <laughs> us um, uh, free access for uh, three years on, on the tablets. And there's a small aperture. It's not that it's open all the time. You want to upgrade, you want to add material and so on. It's controlled. Yes, better. Yeah, better. Because uh, so all are, so they can't do much with it other mm -hmm. than go Education. on, look at their scheme of work, look at lectures by Nigerian teachers, look at um, possible assessment questions, test themselves, ah. go on and do quizzes. Okay. And, and so that, yeah. that's what. So, so it's I okay. come, Magbara, come to you, Maya. Uh, I didn't wrong get Magbara. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, this is my first time of calling. Welcome Not to the show. show. Thank you. My name is Adiron K. Gilasisi. Okay. I'm a okay. I want to contribute to the program. I know. Moraya, you've been doing well. I'm greeting you as well, Miriam and every other crew, not yesterday. And I'm greeting you, Zadi Okay. Welcome and thank you for coming to the show. Okay. Moraya, you have done well. You've been bringing the right people to the program anyway, and you have done it again today for bringing me to the scholastic study at the time. Like you. I said, my name is Adoro Kegel, as you say, from Ambara, I say. So, uh, yes, I trust that she won't fail, because I know her very well, and I know what she's capable of doing. You know, I don't need to say more than that, you know, because I have my child under her care before at Corona Secondary School, and, you know, excellent school, and then she did well. Anyway, so don't let us go beyond that. I have um, two questions for her, which has been bothering my mind when I see students on the road. At times around uh, 839, you see students going to school, students of public school, but some of them might just, maybe might just hold them one set aside group, they roll it in a, in a way and manner that you might be wondering that. Uh, do they have more than one route in the school to write it? And more so, they go to school late. These are the children that are supposed to be in school before 8 o'clock. I think assembly begins by 8, eight yeah. later. Eight. But 9 o'clock, you still see them walking in two and three, you know, going to school. What type of uh, disciplinary measures, you know, are the, uh, you know, okay. are the, maybe, uh, maybe the government or, or right. the school, the right. teachers, what are they doing for okay. children like that? All right. Thank you very much. Yes, so disciplinary actions. Mm. Well, I've seen that too, and it bothers us a lot. And we are talking to an organization that mm. we want to uh, start uh, going around and uh, sort of asking children why they're not in school. Yes. I, I, I worked for some time in Ocean State, and they had such, such, such an organization. It was very, very effective. Because by about 8.30, you don't see any child on the street. Because the child knows that this, the task force is coming. And so I think we have to get into that. And then for each school individually to, to discipline the children. I think this is one other thing that we also need to get into. I can't uh, start telling you lies and say, no, um, I'm, I'm into that. But we are certainly into it, and we will solve that problem. That, right. that is what I'm sure of. So okay, okay Ma, so, yeah. so Ma, you know, we've heard about these tabs. They seem to be magic tabs, because we hear that the teachers that have it, you can tell when they're in class what they're teaching, yes. sometimes the battery level on the tabs itself, when you call them, magical. So in what ways can we say it, have, it, it has impacted mm -hmm. the students? I mean, uh, not just in numbers, but like the impact right. in students. What can we see differently since we, the teachers had these tabs? Well, first of all, the teachers are in class. Uh, for a teacher to be absent in class would be quite tough because it's georeferenced, okay. so we know the teacher is in class. Okay. And because we can track what the teacher is teaching, we know whether that class is going well or not. Okay. If the class isn't going, if, if it's a general thing like that, four of us are here, mm -hmm. and we see that, and we're using the tab, and we see that all of us are struggling, it's possible for the back-end operations to see. And then that will inform them and improve on the schemes of work, on, on the content. 
going forward. They'll investigate, ask us why. So you can see that there's continuous improvement. That's number one. And number two is the fact that if you go to class, it's not about the tablet. The tablet is there. But what I love most is the new culture of the classroom. It's very engaging, very lively. If you go to class and you talk to the children, the children are lively. They're enjoying they're themselves. They are working in teams and groups. They are discussing together. Did you discuss when you were in primary school? Oh, yeah. It was cheating I now. Saw you sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw you they sleep. <laughs> you know, now they come together in groups. They discuss. They, they present to their teachers. So we are deliberate. That's why I said you teach skills. You don't need to teach skills. I said, so good mm. morning. Today we are mm. doing public speaking. Mm. All these are teaching them assertiveness, motivation, empathy, how to speak in public, you know, all sorts of, you are teaching right. a plethora of skills. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take this call yeah. when I come to you, Bia. Uh, uh, Shola, are you there? Yeah. Yes, you're yes. live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Morning. Good morning to everyone. Mm -hmm. And good morning to the Honorable Commissioner of Executive Legal State. Right. Madam, good morning to you, ma'am. Good morning. Yeah, please, I have your question for uh, the Honorable Commissioner. Number one is uh, learn that most of the time, the cut-off mark in jam, some of the students score low, lower than the cut-off mark. Most, maybe some wants to go to medicine, accounting, banking. But when they have the lowest mark, they give them a bit of educational assistance as an alternative. So what are they doing about that? Number two. Number two is... Uh, with, uh, uh, the Honorable Commissioner said about 400,000 people, student, uh, uh, people apply for the, for the job in two months. Now, what are you doing about the compassion they actually ask for the job? Because we find out that many people are looking for the future, that they know that there is future in government work. And some of them actually wanted to work because of their future. What is the compassion? How are you checking? Actually, actually, has for the job, okay. not because of their future. All right, thank you, Shola. Those are two questions. I don't really understand the second question, but um, is it about what the passion? Do they really have the passion? passion for the job? For so you have to passion. apply, but how do you gauge or how do you detect if they're actually passionate and compassionate about that job? The interview process is quite exacting because uh, they'll go through a written essay where they'll talk about their own feelings about why they are teachers why they want to be teachers, what they hope to achieve as teachers. So we have various questions. So once you answer that, you can tell a lot about that person. And then there's the oral interview, and then there's the classroom uh, part of it as well. So it's a, it's a three-pronged approach. It's not, uh, so from there, you'll get, you get good teachers. Okay. We've gotten some really good teachers. I'm very proud of them. The first part of his question, do you recall? Now, the first part was about JAM. Yes. Mm. That uh, low-scoring students go into education. Well, for now, it's, it's, you can't force people to do what they don't want to do. The, the, like I said, education was not a profession of choice for a young person. Mm. But what we have to do now, what, what we're trying to do in Lagos State, is to change that narrative and get people to be interested in education. Get young people to want to be teachers because of the way we treat teachers, because of the fact mm. that they have a career path. For instance, in Lagos State, this is one state where a teacher can come in and become a permanent secretary. We have okay. six permanent secretaries in the Ministry of Education who were former teachers and principals. Mm. And so you know that when you come in, you career have a path. career mm. path. Yeah. You are going to come in at the same level as your colleagues who went mm. to university. Now you start to climb okay. there. Because of time, let me just quickly mm. take Olaolu and I come to Nima. Olaolu, are you there? Good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Um, my name is Olaolu from I welcome the Honorable Commissioner of education. Um, I've been speaking for some time now, and um, I would like to add something, you know. Um, sometimes it was in, um, the Honorable Commissioner was talking about um, the quality of teachers that have been employed into Lagos State. I remember the last employment that was me. I remember there was a woman that was teaching a child lesson, and eventually that woman got employed. You know, it's not about the quality of the poor and quality. That can I tell you? How can I spoil it now? The quality, the quality as a, the quality, the, the quality of the person that was employed. This woman cannot teach a child, but this woman was employed to go and teach a secondary school, and and that was um, I think probably four or five or so days. 
you know, and one thing I notice about um, Lagos State Education or Lagos State Employment is that you are not employing the right hand. You are employing set of people that are introduced by politicians. You know, politicians, you know, connection there, connection there. Yeah. They are not people that eventually supposed to speak to. Okay, I think I get the question. Laulu, let me just, because we have, we have very little time. So there, according to Laulu, there are people who are getting into that teaching scheme that are not qualified, that are coming through politicians, connections. There's no way we will take a teacher without a degree. So if it's qualifications, that's totally out of it. No matter who, who you are close to or who you know, we would never take someone who does not have a degree in education. Not, you can't come with BSc Biology. Mm -hmm. We won't take you. Okay. No. You come with BSc Biology, you have a PGD. But if you have connection with the, with the politician, can you still find a way to wiggle your way in? No, no. If you don't have a degree, absolutely not. Mm. It's impossible. And you the thing is, the we, we were, there's no way we won't go through a lot of political pressure. But one thing we were adamant about is, whatever, whoever it is, the person must have the necessary qualifications. The person must do well in our test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that we never played with, no matter who it is. And a lot of people saw that, and they left us after a while. And in fact, we, people are very cross. Mm -hmm. Many, many people. And that's OK. We'll live with that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we just tried as much. We had 100,000 people apply, and we were going to take 2,000. That was tough. Mm -hmm. That must have been. So, um, Let's go, okay. so we broke the hearts of 98,000 people. Yeah. So yeah. the past um, one year has forced us to focus on technology in teaching. Yeah. And I saw what Lagos State did with the uh, Mozambique TV partnership to educate students, what part of those th things are you still holding on to? What part of technology in teaching or distant learning, reaching more children, are you still holding on to from uh, the experience? We, ne we haven't stopped. Um, we stopped one or two of the radio stations because they gave us free during the lockdown. Mm. And obviously, you have to make money, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You two break here for adverts. <laughs> so they couldn't keep doing that. So uh, we have to say thank you to them. They did this for months on end, every day free of charge. And uh, so we had to stop those ones. But the ones that we normally pay for, that uh, we have a relationship like um, Lagos TV, and so we continue doing them. And um, we also, of course, the tablets are there. We gave it to the children. We still use them. Mm. And Do you do some online classes, maybe extra moral classes now? Do they continue online? Yeah, there's online. You see, that online is more self-tutoring, where you go onto your tablet and you, yeah, you study by yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, a lot of but that. I okay, just wanted ahead. to find out if Lagos State is also looking at vocational schools mm -hmm. and technical schools where children will learn skills. You know, you mentioned a lot about having more content and less skills. Thank you again for that. Well, thank you for all your questions. You've made me think a lot. Um, vocational schools are essential mm -hmm. because what we are doing it's like a funnel. It was described as a funnel by uh, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili some years ago. But how many children enter and how many leave is something reasonable. So it's clear that we have to provide options for every child. Every child. And not behave as if going to university is sacrosanct. You don't have to go to have a good living, to have a good job. Mm -hmm. And so what we are planning to do is to exercise the possibility of options for our students. We've done some things. We do have technical colleges. We have five, not enough at all. So now we are developing what we call monotechnics. Those ones would be like focused on, a, on, a, on, on one skill, maybe fashion design school, computer school, construction school across the state. Because building these big um, vocational schools is expensive. Mm. You need a lot of land. You need a lot of teachers. But if we're able to... Uh, you know, computer school. Be able to take somewhere like Onike, put a school there, computer school. You, can, you don't need a lot of land, but you can get a lot of students and you will change a lot of lives. Yes. Yes. So those are some of the strategies that we have. And also within our existing schools, we are looking at the possibility that if a child just doesn't have the aptitude for physics, chemistry, biology, and so on, as mm -hmm. we're doing it now, then let us provide options for that child within mm -hmm. the school and give them um, opportunities to do other things. Like, we went to Badagri. Badagri... It doesn't make sense for someone to be a, fisher, a fisherman in Badagri. It makes a lot of sense. But you can't. Uh, what we want is a fisherman who, who will be able to brand himself on, yes. um, on Instagram. Yeah. A fisherman who will be able to take the fish, smoke it, 
Package it beautifully. So Sell it and them do it. Let me show you. 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 Let me show where you can now learn the skills and become a fantastic fisherman so that yeah. when you, you, you become like your father as a fisherman, you can also add the, add take your father's your profession to the next, next level. level. Mm. Modernize it. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, mm. That, gotcha. that's what... That's, have a it's call. a dream. It's a dream. But we are working on okay, it. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah. Mm. I was going to talk to you about public partners if you are working with the private sector, but I have mm. a call. Prophet, good morning. Are you there, Prophet? Good morning. You're Mario. live. Go ahead, sir. I'm, I'm, your, I'm a good fan of uh, your view. Thank you, sir. I, I follow your, your program for three years now. Thank you very but much, sir. But unfortunately, um, I got to you yesterday, and today I'm so lucky. All right, sir. Thank you. Welcome uh, to the show. You have I 10 really seconds. Want to contribute. I, want, I really want to contribute to the education level in Lagos State. Yes. Because they, they are doing so well, okay. so well. And Murayo and... Uh, uh, Lema, you people are doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, the Just keep it up. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. God will bless you. Thank you very much. And God will continue to increase your knowledge. All right. Thank uh, you. My contribution to the Minister, Honorable Minister, uh, Commissioner for Education is okay. what are they doing to correct the people selling around the public school and people smoking? Mm. Some young child smoking around the public school. And the, the people going to school, they are seeing them as an example. Mm. What the education level, what are they doing to correct that witchcraft? Thank you very much, Professor Kennedy. That's a fantastic question. Honorable Commissioner, we'd like to that, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a very important question because it's bringing down discipline in our schools because of all these uh, um, places of ill repute, so to speak, surrounding schools. And um, we are in talks with the security forces as well as our ministry of uh, uh, well, our security forces to see the legal way by which we can clear schools mm -hmm. and just leave them, you know, where they are without this the incursion of all sorts of people. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as you it's think. It's going to be tough for because there's the legal side of it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If somebody builds his house opposite a school. And just hey, you can, you know. yeah. All right, we have to wrap up. But thank you very much, madam. I think you've, thank you. you've been able to shed some light on what Lagos State Government is doing. We'll continue to bring you back once in a while just to give us an update. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold, take you up on the uh, vocational school. Yes, We're please. really interested because that's something that's really important. You said that funnel, we want, we've been taking 100,000 children in school. We want at least 80% of that to come yeah. out with something. So mm. we'll, we'll take you up on that in the, in the coming months. Thank you. Okay, let's go on the break. When we come back, we go to our gist for the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.